Good morning, and welcome to Shepherd's Heart Christian Fellowship. We are so happy that you decided to spend some time with us this morning. I bring you greetings from Pastor Luther Archer, the pastor of this fine fellowship and church. We ask your continued prayers for his speedy recovery. And uh, today is April the 25th. Time is just flying. But praise God, we're still here. This morning, I would like to speak to you on transformation. Transformation. And I would like to start by reading Romans the 12th chapter, the first through the second verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come this morning with grateful hearts, so glad to still be here, so glad to honor you, Father, most holy and everlasting Father, so glad that we'll still here with a mind stayed on you. Now, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will anoint me, anoint me for the task at hand which is a wonderful task. And let nothing I say or do mis misguide anyone, but help it to be a blessing and help them to see you. None of me, but all of you. I love you in Jesus' name I pray, amen. This morning I want to say to you, Paul wrote this letter to introduce himself to the Roman church and to give them a summary of Christian teaching. You know, when Jesus came, Jesus came and he got people to travel around with him and taught them what to do when he leave. Taught them what was important. Taught them how to be pleasing to God so they could teach other people. And so that we could be who God created us to be. Amen. It begins by showing that every person has rebelled against God and was cut off from him. In the beginning, when the world got to be so sinful, God destroyed the world by... He destroyed it by water and only saved Noah and his family who saved the abundance of animals. But people just kept being sinful. People would not do what God had told them to do. And it's just like that today. We have so many problems today because people have a free will and they want to do things their way. People forget that they have to have a place to spend eternity. We all shall die if Jesus doesn't part the sky and come back before our name is called. So we need to concentrate on transforming ourselves to be 
what God has called us to be. Because we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We need to transform ourselves to be pleasing to God. So Paul is telling us that in Romans 12. It says, it, it begins by showing us that every person has rebelled against him and been cut off. But God in his mercy stepped in while we were set against him and opened the way back to himself. There's a love that our father have for us that is unmeasurable. There is a love that our father have for us that is unmatchable. And nothing we can do can cut off that love that God have for us. So that love should make us want to please him. God could not relax the law of the universe because the law came from him. It's out of his nature. It came, he gave it to Moses. Moses gave it to the people. And that's why he sent his beloved son, Jesus, from heaven to be born again and just to die. To be born again as a human with flesh and blood just to die for a sinful world, for the sin we committed, our forefathers committed, that we are still committing. So that anyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved and given the power of God to live a good life. A good life. So in Romans 12, Paul is begging the body of Christ, even this day, today, through the word, he's speaking to us because of the mercy of our Father, who is good to us, that we should present our bodies a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice unto God, which is our reasonable service. This is why Christ died. Can I stress it enough? The gospel is about Christ and the cross and the resurrection and the blood. Hallelujah. To enable us to do so, this is what Christ underwent. We are to place our faith in Christ and the cross to carry out our great work with our lives. We were born with a purpose. Not my will. But thy will be done, Lord. We were born with a purpose. We are so special to him. We are a temple unto God in which he has placed his Holy Spirit in us, right in us. To enable us. To enable us to do and to be the temple of God. And to do what he's called for us to do. Because of our Savior who went to the cross for us. Went to the cross. We should want to make our bodies a living temple of God. We should want to think spiritually in every situation. And not worldly. Because that's not blessing God. That's only blessing Satan. The world does not belong to the Christians. Not yet. The new world will, but not this world. Satan is the god of this world. See, it has it has to be by faith in our savior and not by our works that we do what we are called to do for God. It's a hot thing. It has to do with your heart. If it was works, any man can boast. 
We absolutely must renew our minds and transform ourselves by renewing our minds. Get rid of the carnal mind, the worldly way of doing things and accept what Jesus Christ gave us at that cross. And do it the way Jesus did it, the way he has told us to do it through his anointed writings in the Bible that was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Pass the test by being obedient and doing it God's way. I think about the fact that there are so many people living double lives. What does that mean? It means that you know the Lord. You say you love the Lord, but you're still doing things the way you want to do them. You have people working in the church that are not doing it the way God wanted it done, and they don't have the heart for the people. They don't love the people. They're doing it for show. They're doing it to be recognized, but they're not doing it to please God. It doesn't do you any good. It's not a good thing to do it that way. You need to do it God's way. That's the only way it's acceptable to God. Apostle Paul also told us in, in um, Corinthians. He told the Corinthians as he told us in Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. God has made us new. When we accept Jesus Christ, we are new people. We are born again. You must be born again. Like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Does it mean going back into your mother's womb? No. No, it does not mean that. It means being born of the Spirit. Being born of the Spirit. Let me give you an example. I'll use the caterpillar that crawls around on the ground. And anybody can tell you that right now is caterpillar time. They are everywhere, all over the place. All hairy, not pleasant to look at. I used to could not stand to even look at them. If they were on one side of the road, I'd cross over to the other side of the road. I remember when my husband and I were courting over 42 years ago. And he took me for a walk in the park. And I came across an outrageous number of caterpillars. They were everywhere. It just scared me so bad that I could not... Eat. We had taken sandwiches out to have like a little picnic of, at lunchtime. It just paralyzed me almost. That's how frightened I was of a caterpillar. And some people said, are you kidding me? The caterpillar is a beautiful butterfly when it's all said and done. Well, I remember as a child, we used to love to run through the woods and as we ran through the woods one day, something, some worm, I don't know whether it was a caterpillar or what it was, attached itself to my sister. And we could not get that worm to turn her loose. I believe we ended up running home and someone struck a match and held it to it and it turned loose. But it had bitten two little holes in her arm. I became frightened of caterpillars. It was amazing for me to find out that a caterpillar isn't always going to be a caterpillar. Okay? Just like we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, we don't have to stay there because Jesus has made a way. The caterpillar goes into a cocoon and is made over. The same way we have to. We have to go into a cocoon, so to speak, and come out differently. 
when the caterpillar emerge again, it is complete. It's a complete new creation, new creature. No longer crawling, no longer hairy, but beautiful. And then it's called a butterfly. The old worm has passed away. It's now colorful, lovely, and it flies. So I want to say to you, you need to be born again, to be transformed so that you can soar the way God made you to soar, so that you can fly the way God has made you to fly. There's no comparison in the caterpillar and the butterfly. Let there be no comparison in you and your born again self. Let people see Jesus when he see you. We need to allow ourselves to be saved by that wonderful, wondrous blood of Jesus. In other words, we must be born again. There's no way around it. We must be born again. We, we are a brand new creation. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and realize he's the only way to the Father. You know, I think about the saints of old when they say, I, you, I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Ever since that wonderful day, I sure been satisfied. They talking about being born again, saints. They talking about doing it God's way. They're talking about being transformed. Ever since that wonderful day, I sure been satisfied. Transformed to be who we were predestined to be. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and never leaves. Never leaves. He's there to direct us, instruct us, protect us, empower us. We are not alone. We don't have to do it ourselves. Jesus did all that it was that we needed done. He paid the price. He died and was born again so that we could be born again. And then he knew we needed help. So he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. So you don't have to do it alone. We have all the help we need. We have all the power. All the power we need. <laughs> We're a new creation, y'all. We transform. The Holy Spirit I love it. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and he never leaves us. We might not always listen to him. We might not always accept what he's telling us. We might not always do what he's telling us, but he's there, and he's advising us, and there's no wrong in him. He's perfect. Just like God the Father and God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is perfect. He directs us and leads us and empowers us. And we are never alone. As a kid, I used to be so frightened about being alone. It's so good to know whether it's somebody in the house with you or in the car, flesh and blood, that doesn't matter. You're never alone. God is right there with you through his holy, powerful, precious spirit. So we can be transformed just like that caterpillar into that new creation and be just as beautiful as that butterfly and be pleasing to God. You know, I say, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. He's wonderful and awesome. 
and he loves us. So that's why we praise him. That's why we please him. That's why we accept his son. And that's why we are transformed into what we were predestined to be. In my lifetime, I've come across several people that want to sort of kind of receive God the Father, but they want nothing to do with God the Son. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's not a choice. That's not an option. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not have heaven as your home. They use the excuse of what well, man wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. And you can write if you let the Lord influence you and tell you what he needs you to write. But it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that's why we ought to read it and study it and meditate on it and pray it and sing it. Because it may be a book written by man's hand, but it is from God. But it's going to take faith and trust to believe this. And it's up to you. We got that free will that God gave us. And we must use it. Let us look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. We've been into uh, 2 Corinthians before, but this is 3.18. So, but we all, with open faces, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, in other words, changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We have to allow ourselves to be transformed into what or who God created us to be. We have a free will. And there again, the free will can get us into so much trouble. But we need to make that free will be like our spirit man. The free will that we have is carnal. And it, it wants to take you in the wrong direction. So we need that powerful spirit of God that lives in us, which is the Holy Spirit, to train us, correct us, direct us to the free will of who God would have us to be. If you have not received Christ, you are shut off from God the Father. But if we have accepted Christ, we have we have had that veil removed and we can and should be as a mirror that brightly reflects the glory of God. Hallelujah. Yes, we can be that. Hallelujah. And as the spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like him and reflect his glory even more, even more. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus did for us on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, became a living, given spirit. A living, given spirit. Let us receive from Jesus and be ye transformed into his image. We can't do it without Jesus. We can't go to God the Father without going by God the Son. He's the door. And why would we want to go if we don't want to accept Jesus? What he did on the cross is what paid for us. We, we just need to let the Holy Spirit prepare us to receive the truth and have faith in it. Christ, who came to this world as a baby, played, placed in a, a, an amazing young woman, 
transformed from a carpenter to our life-giving Savior. Stayed and worked as a carpenter for 30-some years. Mary, who was young, she was a young girl, decided to change her plans for her own life and give her plans over to her Heavenly Father and, 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 and did what he asked her to do so that she could deliver our Lord and Savior. She put her life on hold and birthed our Redeemer who came through 42 generations to save our soul. Won't you accept him? Isn't that enough for you? He came just to die so that we could be transformed from a sinner and to be saved by grace. Moses had given us the law, but Jesus gave us mercy. Moses died and is still dead, but Jesus got up out of that grave. Hallelujah! And he came and fulfill the law. The law was supposed to be phased out. Christ brought us a new covenant, a new covenant, the butterfly of grace. Hmm. Mercy. Hey! And love came through him. He brought us liberty. And the, it's where the spirit is, for the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, liberty to love, a transformed life, a holy life, a life to please our Father. We couldn't do it. The only, only one that could do it was Jesus Christ. And that's why. No matter how we feel, no matter what we say, we have to look to that cross. We have to look to the cross that removed the veil from our eyes, coming out of bondage, the bondage of the cocoon, coming out of it. We give the Holy Spirit latitude to work mightily in our hearts and in our lives. God has a way that it has to be done. No matter whether we agree with it or whether we can understand it, we just have to have faith. We have to have faith to do it the way God has called for us to do it. And that's accepting his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 18 says, and that's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. But we with our with open faces, meaning no veils on our face, behold us in a glass. That means looking in the mirror. Looking in the mirror. The glory of the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And now, because we are transformed, born again, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. There is no glory like Jesus. But as we receive what the Spirit of God is telling us, the glory replaces the sinfulness and we become like him. Hallelujah. Change into the likeness of Christ. With glory greater and greater as we leave the worldliness behind us, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is able to make that great change in us and we become as a beautiful, breathtaking butterfly. Let him have his way, y'all. Let him have his way. God created us in his own image. We have seeds to sow and a harvest to reap. We have to let it stop being about us 
And we have to start letting it be about God. We are truly a new creation in him. There's great works to be done. And we, when we are transformed into God's will, we will hear him one day say, well done. Well done. And that's what we're working for. But we have to do it in love because God knows our heart. He knows our intent. We can't do it for show. We have to do it because we love the Lord and we definitely know he loves us. We have to do it because his son died for that. We have to do it because we are kingdom people. We have to do it because it's the blessed thing to do. God created us to transform ourselves into kingdom people. We are his and his alone. Don't let Satan take the glory that belonged to God. He's given us everything. There's nothing else. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And he meant he had done everything he needed to do that had been decided that he would do before the beginning of our time. So therefore, we need to do our part now. And one thing that would help us also is to study, to meditate to pray. God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator if you yield to him. When Jesus said it is finished, trust me, it was finished. There was nothing else to do. Don't put Jesus back on the cross. Don't think you can do something that Jesus can't do. What you do is to accept what he did with a grateful heart and realize that he completed his part and now it's time for you to complete yours. Things are happening now that the word of God has called for to show you that it's the end of time is near. We have to get serious about what we are doing for the kingdom. This place is not our home. We are sojourning. We're traveling through day by day. We're grateful for every day the Lord has given us. But we have to realize we are on our way home. As the song said, we are on our way home. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. And he did. He fixed it. And now we have to do our part. We have to love people so much that when we see people in going the wrong direction, we need to try and help turn them around and show them the right way. And that's why we have to live right, talk right, walk right. It's not like our parents used to say, do as I say, do and not as I do. We have to live it. We have some brilliant young people. But we need to make sure that our young people realize all good things come from God. We have to make sure that our young people realize that, that it's no good if they don't have the Lord Jesus as their Savior and Redeemer, the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, and God as the Father. If you don't understand the Trinity, you don't have to, but accept it in faith. We have to live by faith. That's what a transformed life is. Being able to accept what God say because he's God. Believe what he says because he's God. The Holy Spirit will help you in the transformation from a sinner to a born-again believer. Yes, he will. The beating that Christ took, the blood that he shed, he did it for you. 
He did it for me. Don't let it be in vain. He did it because he loved you. He did it because he loved me. Let's love him back enough to let go the world, to let go the carnal life, and just love and trust and obey. Word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. The Word of God says if you have art against someone, go and get it straight and then come back. Let the old grudges and the hatred and the dislike go. Give it to the Lord. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Not revenge, but vengeance. But if you're going to keep it, then God's going to let you have it. That's that free will again. But let it go. Give it to the Lord. Pray for the person that despitefully use you. Pray for the person that you know is mistreating you or have mistreated you. God will work it out. He will. I've told many times how everything didn't always go excellent on my job, but God always fixed it. He always fixed it. And now, praise God, retired. Retired. Don't have to get up and go anywhere. And I love the Lord and I praise him for that. And I tell you right now, if you are having a hard time believing the word of God, receiving Jesus Christ, if you are going through something, just hold your hand out to the computer. And listen to this prayer and receive. Father God, we come first of all thanking you for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we come asking you to forgive us for anything we have done that wasn't pleasing to you. Father God, we know Jesus went to the cross so that we could repent. And right now we're repenting. For any sin, the sin of commission, the sin of omission, the sin of disliking, the sin of holding a grudge, the sin of not loving. Forgive us, Lord. And now, Lord, I ask you for any person that are seeking you, that are holding their hand out to you right now. Hear their prayer, Father God. Bless, touch, and heal any situation that they're in. Father, and I ask you to bless the people that are having financial problems. Bless the person that are having emotional problems. Bless the person that are contemplating suicide. Bless them, Lord. Bless the person that think they don't have anybody to turn to. Help them to know they can always turn to you. Bless the person, Father God, that don't know where the next meal is coming from. Feed them, Father. Bless, Father, the people who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 and any other illness. Bless them, Lord. Bless them and help them, Father. Bless the brokenhearted, the emotionally ill. Bless the person that's so sad at this particular moment. I know you're able, Father God. And I ask you to just bless because of your son, Jesus. Help them to know that the joy of the Lord is their strength. Help them, Father God. Just touch and heal, Father God, for you are able. You made us and you can remake us. Father God, it's not the doctor. I know this. Father, bless them. And I thank you in advance. And I, too, receive it in Jesus' name. Lord, I love you. And I say to you this day, this morning, may God bless you. May God keep you. Trust God. Go to God with your problems. Go to God with your love. Go to God with any situation. And he'll work it out for you. And then tell somebody about the love of God. God bless you. Amen and goodbye.